What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and today we're here once again with our USB DIY PC setup guide. Except this time rather than running a basic Linux system, today we're going to show you how to run a full blown Windows operating system off something as small as a USB thumb drive. Now again recently we did make a video about a DIY PC but we did use Linux and that can be found right up there and whilst Linux is definitely a good platform, let's face it, most of us want to run Windows or Mac OS and Linux is great for things here and there but again most of us do prefer the Windows operating system. So today we're going to be showing you exactly the same project but this time with Windows. Now if you watched that previous Linux video, great but forget just about everything in it as Windows is a little bit different from the Linux install process. Rather than being able just to run it off the single USB that you could, when it comes to Windows you do need a few different things which can make the process a little bit more difficult. But with that being said, why would you even want to do this type of project at all? Well whether your school or workplace has restrictions on you, having your own computer on the go in a very small form factor is really helpful. Now yes, you could go ahead and buy something like an Intel Compute Stick compute card or something similar in a very small form factor, but the problem with them is you are locked down to the hardware that you do have on that system. Now some of the time, yes, the hardware on those little compute sticks are way better than whatever terminal you'll be plugging into, but a lot of the time desktop hardware with desktop components can be a lot better performing than what you would find on a smaller Intel compute stick. And well, basically all we're doing is taking the storage with us and not really worrying about too much of the other components. So the CPU, GPU, RAM and everything else of a computer is going to be hosted by the actual machine itself and we're really just replacing the storage instead of the internal drive and actually in a lot of cases can be a lot better as we're using flash storage whereas a lot of the time public terminals or work computers and stuff like that will be running a mechanical hard drive so definitely speed can be slightly helped with the Windows operating system on a flash drive. Now with that being said also too we get things like better security as you know not really having to share the computer with anyone, but on the flip side, the security can just be flawed because if you lose that memory stick, well, then everything on it is now lost and someone else may get access to it. Sure, you can go ahead and encrypt the drive, but again, when it comes to security, if you've lost a piece of physical, well, hardware that has data on it, it's really not looking pretty good for you, so you can be in a bit of trouble. Now, one thing that I do want to bring up before we do get into the actual process of installing this is do check the policies of the systems that you are using. Using. Some workplaces and some schools actually have it in their digital policies that you will not run VMs or you will not run your own instances of computers on their hardware to get around their firewalls, their blocks or get in programs that you shouldn't necessarily be using. So do keep in mind that sure it's a really cool idea to run one of these and personally I have one of these uh, memory sticks with an operating system on it in my bag all the time. Do keep in mind that some businesses and some workplaces or business workplaces and some schools do have it against their policy, so you might find yourself in a whole lot of hot water. But with that being said, enough boring chit chat, let's go ahead and get started and setting up our own USB. But first, let's take a look at what we're going to be needing. Now in the Linux video, we could really get away with just a single USB, but in this case we need at least two drives to go ahead and do this process. We'll also too need to first grab ourselves a Windows iPhone. ISO. Whether you want to run Windows 10 8.1 or Windows 7, you'll need to track down yourself an ISO or grab the Windows 10 install utility. Now again, if you are going with just a standard Windows 10 install, go on the Microsoft website, I'll leave a link down below. It's a very simple tool to follow and we'll get onto that in just a moment. However, if you are more interested in Windows 8.1 like I am or Windows 7, you will need to track yourself down an ISO to go ahead and use, but we'll get to how to actually use that in just a moment. But make sure you have an ISO or install tool ready for this process. We'll also do need to go ahead and grab ourselves one of two memory sticks. The first memory stick we want to grab is a smaller install drive. This is what I'll refer to as an install drive. It's going to be about eight or so gigabytes in size and is going to be used to install the Windows operating system. Basically, once we've installed Windows, we can really do whatever else we want with that memory stick. We can format it back to being a regular memory stick. It doesn't need to stay as a Windows operating system drive, or you could probably just leave it if you want to have a Windows bootable media. We'll also too need to grab ourselves another memory stick with much more capacity. Over on the Linux side, we could easily get away with 8 or 16 gigs because Linux was lightweight, it was simple, and honestly didn't take up a whole lot of storage. Whereas 
because on the Windows side, Windows can be rather big, rather heavy, and there's a lot more applications that can be installed on it a lot easier, meaning the drive will fill up. So for this particular video, we did pick ourselves up a 64 gig drive, which is actually in this laptop right now. I think we can kind of see the edge of it um, running the actual operating system. So we grabbed a 64 gig drive, but I do recommend going for something like a 128 gig drive as well, because Windows can chew up a lot of space. And whilst sure Windows has definitely gotten a lot better in keeping its size down, at the end of the day, we will be losing a fair chunk of storage to the actual Windows install. So if you want to install Windows and a whole bunch of applications, store some files on there and that kind of stuff, you'll probably want to be looking at least 128 gigs of storage, but you could easily get away like we did with 64 gigs of drive. But really, the bigger the drive, the better it usually is. I guess also too is another thing, if you just wanted to pick up a USB hard drive, that is also too totally possible. The exact same processes we'll be applying here today would also to apply to that external USB drive. So whether it's an actual USB stick like this guy or an external hard drive, it should work either way. And one final thing that I do want to point out is make sure your USB drives are USB 3.0. If it's USB 2.0, don't even bother starting this project because it will just take you so much time from installing Windows to getting things copied. It really just isn't that much point. So grab yourself USB 3.0 as a minimum to go ahead and get yourself up and running. But with that being said, all you need is an ISO, a couple USB drives, and you are off to the races. So first and foremost, let's jump into the process. And the first thing we want to do is download our USB installer tool. If you are running Windows 10, all you need to do is jump over to the Microsoft website. Again, I've left that link down below and download the Windows 10 utility. Now this utility is all self-enclosed. Everything is ready to go. You simply select your device, select which version of Windows, and you are off to the races. Really, really simple process. However, if you are like me and prefer 8.1 or Windows Windows 7, you will need to also to grab yourself something like Universal USB Installer, jump through all the processes and fill out the box like so, and basically we'll be off to the races. Whilst these are downloading and getting all your ISOs and your tools ready, go ahead and also to plug in the storage drive or the larger USB to go ahead and get set up. What we'll want to do is jump into computer management tool and then from there find our drive and format it to be FAT32. A lot of drives come out of the box as FAT32, but it is always good to make sure it's formatted and there's nothing really on it to go ahead and do this process. Unfortunately, it may be a little bit hit and miss if you are running things like XFAT or NTFS. I've seen it work here and there, but for today's video, I set everything up with FAT32 and for me, it worked perfectly, so... I'm just going to run with FAT32. Then once we've done that, we're going to also to click the partition and set it as active. Now some of the time, as that computer decides to go to sleep, some of the time the actual partition uh, won't necessarily be allowed to be active and the little button will be greyed out. If that's the case, what you'll need to go ahead and actually do is find disk part and make a few changes in there and then you can go ahead and do it. I'll try and leave an article link down below with an actual guide to uh, actually running through disk part to get it working, but for the most part, on most USBs you should easily enough be able to right click and select as active. At this point, once your USB drive is formatted and active, we can unplug it and set it aside. We won't really have to do much with it, and once this drive is set aside, we can plug in our installed drive. And usually at this point, if you have fast enough internet, once this is all done, we should also to have our ISOs downloaded and also to install the tools. Again, fill out the forms, run through the installers, and after waiting what should be an eternity, you should have a bootable Windows 10, 8.1, or Windows 7 drive. If you want more detail on USB Universal Installer, I think I did a video up there or link down below. Uh, it is a really awesome tool. But once that's being done and we've got our install media and we've got our C drive or our storage drive done, we can basically unplug everything, go over to a different computer, or if you want to set it up on yours, shut it down and reboot the system. When you hit that power button, also to make sure you hit that F8 key as that is usually on most motherboards and laptops, the boot menu key. Once we do access the boot menu, we we'll want to first and foremost select the USB install media. Basically, we're booting from the media to go ahead and install it. And at this point, it's basically as you would install Windows on any other system. Run through all the processes. However, once we get to this window, what we'll actually want to do is make sure we select the storage USB drive rather than the internal hard drive. Now, if you're having a hard time distinguishing which one is which, just look for this capacity that you did buy. If you bought yourself a 64 gig USB drive, look for something that's around 64 gig, 128, look for 
Windows 28, usually it is a fairly easy thing to pick. Make sure you don't install Windows on your internal SSD or hard drive because, well, now you've just gone ahead and wiped your system, but once you've selected it, you should be all good to go. Now, I'm sure someone's going to point out, hang on a second, why don't I have my internal drive showing up on my uh, installer list? That's simply because the XPS 15 was throwing a few errors when I was trying to make this video, and let's face it, it was simpler just to undo four screws, pull out the drive, do this video and throw the drive in when I'm done rather than trying to troubleshoot software and that kind of stuff. But for the most part, when you do get to this window, you'll see your USB drive, but also to your internal drive. Again, my internal drive isn't there because I disconnected it because I was having some issues with this particular process. But that was mainly down to the fact that I'm running some other custom stuff that's doing bits and pieces here and there. 99.99% of you out there won't even have any of this issue. But once we've gone ahead and done that, Windows will install as it has every other time and boom, we are dumped onto the desktop. At this point, we can unplug our install USB, format it to be just a regular USB again, and we are now running off our external USB drive. We can jump over to something like 99.com, install all our basic applications, and also do grab things like Steam, and basically the system is ready to go. Now, yes, if you are running an older system like Windows 7 and stuff like that, you will need to find yourself some drivers, and there can be a few issues here and there, especially if you are moving from computer to computer, Computer, having drivers may be an issue, but with newer operating systems like 8.1 and Windows 10, they actually have some really decent drivers built in and everything is about ready to go from Wi-Fi connectivity to battery indicators if you are running on a laptop to decent enough audio setup. So. If you are running a new operating system, you should be pretty much good to go. However, if you are running on Windows 7 or an older operating system, I do recommend having some drivers on hand, especially if you are jumping from computer to computer, to make sure the experience is as effortless as possible. And that's about it. The operating system is ready to go. You can unplug it, jump from computer to computer, and you are all good to go. Now, if you are looking at this kind of thing for running games, I also too went ahead and did exactly that. Now, I do recommend going ahead and running your games off of an external hard drive because you will be seeing better performance. But in terms of actual gaming numbers, well, here are our numbers. And taking a look at them, well, after I threw it on the 1080 Ti 7700K test bench, they're really not exactly that much different from running it off an internal SSD. As we all know that once a game has loaded up, storage is really not that much of a difference. However, some games like GTA 5 and I guess bigger sandbox type of games do actually have a little bit of stuttering when running off of a USB drive. Other than a really long load time, I did find random stutters here and there. Again, this could just be down to the fact that, well, they're a little bit larger games requiring a little bit more storage IO and that kind of stuff. So we may have the issue there, but Usually, if you are going to be running it off an external uh, SSD or external hard drive, you should see not much of a difference in performance from running it off an external hard drive on a full desktop system. So, whilst yes, you can run games off of a little USB, I generally recommend your operating system off of this guy and basic applications and then external hard drives for your gaming needs, as usually they're a lot bigger, a lot cheaper and definitely do the job there. But with that being said, once you're booting off this guy, you basically have full admin control over that computer so you can really do whatever you want with that particular system. But all in all, installing Windows from a USB for a super small on-the-go PC package is a really simple task, and as long as you can access the boot menu on boot with the systems, you can really run whatever you want. And with that being said, usually these kind of little PC setups are a lot better than something like an Intel Compute Stick, as again, you're not locked down to the hardware that is incorporated into said Compute Stick. You're really only limited to that small little USB itself. Now again, I do want to make note that some workplaces, schools and that kind of stuff do have policies against this kind of stuff and from a security standpoint if you lose that memory stick you may be in a little bit of hot water but all in all for a simple process it is not too bad and in terms of the price point it's also too relatively cheap. Also to one final note things like Windows 10 that actually bind your product key to the BIOS will absolutely have a terrible time when doing this because you're going to be switching from computer to computer so a lot of the time you may actually find a little message in the corner saying that this version of Windows is not activated or activate now kind of thing, you may just have to live with that as you will be switching from computer to computer and Windows actually usually does a pretty good job at detecting what hardware is in the system and detecting when that hardware changes. So do keep in mind that some installs of Windows just will not have a good time with switching from computer to computer, but that will not affect performance at all. It will just give you a little watermark in the corner, which may be a little bit annoying. But all in all, a pretty cool little project to go ahead and do and something that I really love to have with me all the time and
and it does a pretty good job. But let me know what you think of portable USB computers. Do you run one? Let me know down below. Otherwise, any links that I did talk about today, again, link down in that description box. Thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.